welcome you to the daily dynamite and devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion this 18th day of April 2023. Let us pray. Glorious God, we thank you for you are awesome. Thank you for bringing for us forth into this day. May your name be glorified. Enlighten us with your word because your word is true. Through the mercies of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Today, we'll be considering a very important topic, which says, status seeking, the faith of the supercilious. Status seeking, the faith of the supercilious. We'll take our text from the book of Judges, chapter 12, reading at verse 1. Judges 12, at verse 1. The men of Ephraim called out their forces, crossed over to Zephon, and said to Jephthah, Why did you go to fight the Ammonites without calling us to go with you? We are going to burn down your house over your head. Jephthah answered, I and my people were engaged in a great struggle with the Ammonites, and although I called, you didn't save me out of their hands. When I saw that you wouldn't help, I took my life in my hands and crossed over to fight the Ammonites. And the Lord gave me the victory over them. Now, why have you come up today to fight me? This is a very important passage of the scripture that depicts or showcases the word super serious. This word means having proud and unpleasant attitude towards someone having actions that are not godly to dip, show pride to activate one's inner original intention to show pride the men of Ephraim are supercilious in nature they took themselves too highly beyond they ought to be Judges chapter 11 presented some facts about the man Jephthah. Number one, Judges chapter 11 verse 1, his mother was a prostitute. Number two, his brothers hated him. Number three, they threw him away. Number four, he left and remained focused. Number five, he was a mighty warrior. Remember, they sent him out and he went to the land of tomb. The land of tomb means goodness, a land of goodness. He was also called a mighty warrior. He is not just a warrior, but a mighty warrior, which shows a warrior who is a leader. In our text today, the men of Ephraim are supercilious. They are strong within, but are empty outside. No wonder they had to come to accuse Jephthah of not coming to call them. Today, in the scripture, we will see that these men wants to take part of a glory they did not join in getting. They want to share of a glory. They did not pay any price. They want to fight their own brother Jephthah because he didn't call them. We are in the scripture clearly stated that they were called. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 clearly says, he that did not walk should not eat. He that did not engage his hand on a walk should not be part of the glory. And Judges chapter 12 verse 2 also says, Jephthah answered, I and my people were engaged in a great struggle with the Ammonites. And although I called, you didn't save me out of their hands. This shows that Jephthah called the people of Ephraim. They did not answer, which also depict the fact that the men of Ephraim are liars. We will see the kind of men that we have also in our time today where we have men who are ready to lie against their brethren. Verse 3 of that Judges chapter 12 also says, When I saw that you wouldn't help, I took my life in my hands and crossed over to fight the Ammonites. The man Jephthah didn't allow the negative attitude of his brother, the men of Ephraim, to affect, to affect his vision, to affect his dream, to affect where he was going, to affect his passion. You cannot trip where you did not sow. The men of Ephraim are men of supercilious attitude. Now, we are in a time where young people are no longer interested to work. They are no longer interested to get in and make their hands dirty to produce food for themselves. 
young people in our time, also in our generation, are interested in an already baked bread, are interested in an already produced food. The celebration time syndrome. Most young people are only interested in to celebrate, interested in celebrating those who have actively worked and produced good food. Hence, the men of Ephraim quarreled with Jephthah. Remember, Jephthah was a man of grace. In Judges chapter 8, if you remember, these men also quarreled with Gideon. Unfortunately for them, Jephthah is not a man as same as the men of uh, as Gideon. Jephthah was a man who is ready to display character, to display capacity, to stand for what he believed. They did it with Gideon. Gideon played, played a calm attitude with them. Now in chapter 12 in the book of Judges, they came with that same action against Jephthah. But Jephthah's case was different. Jephthah fought them. Jephthah fought them so zealously that about 40,000 of the men of Ephraim were put to death. About 40,000 of them were put to death. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2 says, Where there is pride, there is disgrace. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 2. Where there is pride, there is disgrace. These men exhibited pride. These men exhibited unpleasant quality. Proverbs 11 verse 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. The men of Ephraim are proud and indignant people. Remember, you cannot attack a man under grace. No matter how highly connected you may be, no matter how highly placed you may be, no matter how high you think you can be, a man that is under grace cannot be attacked. A man who is seated under the power of God cannot be attacked. This was a man who sacrificed her only daughter because she made, he made a vow. And that vow he made was the only first thing that comes to greet me when I come back from battle. Ah, I will give to the Lord. Interestingly, her daughter came. He refused. He did not allow the beauty. He did not allow the pleasure. He did not allow the relationship with her daughter to take him away from sacrificing that girl. Such man is a man of grace. Such man is a man of notable character. What have we released unto God? To what extent have we given ourselves to God? So that he can fight our battles. To what extent have we released the grace of God has given to us unto, to other men? We must also remember we are in a season of Easter. We are in a season where Jesus gave all, died for all once upon the cross for our salvation, for our redemption, to take us away from the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light. He has redeemed us. Men of Ephraim refused to bring out the grace of God upon them. They desire to keep mute. After a battle, they will come to take glory. No, these men are the very drainable men who we must be careful about in our society today. We must also be careful with men whose interests are only to celebrate our greatness. With men whose interests are only to rejoice with us. Men who are not ready to suffer with us. Men who are not ready to bear challenges with us. Men who are not ready to go the extra mile with us. They appear only during the time of celebration. We must be careful of such men. These facts must be noted in today's consideration. Number one, your situation does not define your future. Jephthah was a man who was thrown away by his brothers. Jephthah was a man who was rejected. Jephthah was a man who was abandoned. But he refused that his situation would define him. These men of Ephraim refused to join him in battle. But he refused that the situation of his rejection will not bring him down. He refused that at the point of rejection, he will not throw away the capacity God has placed in him. To every man God has called, he gave ability. To every man God has enthroned, he gave abilities. To every man God has given a gift. God expects those gifts he has given in them 
to be manifested. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men. This time of battle for Jephthah was to reveal that light which God has kept in, me, in him. Without the Ephraimites, without the men of Ephraim, God gave Jephthah battle, success. Without the men of Ephraim, God gave him success. Therefore, I speak to us this morning, your situation does not define your future. May we not allow the times where we will find ourselves to define where we are going to. We are in a situation in this country where the government is not working. We are in a situation in this country where men are no longer reputable as they ought to be. We must refuse that these times where we find ourselves will not affect the graces God has been built in us. We must also refuse that the nature of our economy, where young people will graduate from school, there is no job. We must refuse. We must become employers of labor. Jephthah went to the land of To, the land of goodness. The Bible says, men followed him. Men followed him. And he was in that same land. His king's men came and sought for him to join them to deal with their enemies. Your situation should not weigh you down. Your situation should not destroy your future. Your situation should not make you think backwards. Your situation does not define you. Key number two in today's scripture. God does not look at you from the point of your situation. God looks at you from the point of the promises he has embedded in you. The nature of where you are. God is not looking at that aspect. God said to Abraham, I will create you. I will make you great. I will make your sons like the sons of the seashore. So shall your generation be. Yet at the point of that statement, the man Abraham had no child. That was the situation he found himself. But Abraham believed God's promises. Abraham believed the word of God upon his life. Abraham believed what God had said to him. Therefore, God does not look at the present situation. He looks at the things he has kept in you. Number three point, your location does not define you. You are from Nigeria, will not limit you. We have men of qualitable character also in Nigeria. We have men of capacity also in Nigeria. So you are from Nigeria, you are from Onewi, you are from Pangshin, you are from Joss. Does not limit anybody to manifest the grace God has kept in him. We must not behave like the men of Ephraim who are lazy. The men of Ephraim who has refused to catch the grace God has given them. They are warriors. They are men. They are men who have the ability to fight. Behold, they are dead outside. Their strength lies on their lips. Their strength lies on what they think they are. But within, they are empty. No wonder they do, were not ready to assist Jephthah to fight. Your location does not define you. Remember again that the man Jephthah was called from outside. He knew he was going to meet his brothers when he came. But he didn't allow such ideology to dissuade him. He marched forward. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. A very important scripture. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. Though you walk through the fire, a very important scripture that will aid every young person that wants to manifest the grace God has kept in him. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. So, so wherever you are located, where you pass through the water, I will be with you. And where you pass through the rivers, I will be with you. They will not sweep over you. The nature of the economy the standpoint of your brethren, the way your brethren take you, God is saying, I will be with you. You will not be born. Oh, they threw the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, into the lake of fire. The Bible says God was with them. No wonder the king saw four persons when he threw three persons. What showed the king, what was the revelation behind the sight of the king? He had to see four and not three. God said he will be with you. So wherever you are located, Daniel at the point he was to be located in the Daniel lion's den, he refused that his thoughts, he refused that his fears will bring him down. 
He went because he knew God was with him. And Jesus cried in Gethsemane, at the cross rather, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Yet, Jesus knew that God was with him. He understood the way to the cross. He understood the passion of the cross. Though he made that prayer, he knew where he was going to. His location at the cross at that point did not in any way dissuade him from dying on the cross. The later verses of later portion of that Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The point is that there is a fire to walk through. There is a fire to walk through. It is real fire, but the scripture made it clear. You will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. In the days of Joseph, Potiphar's wife worked so hard to destroy the graces of God upon Joseph. Potiphar's wife worked so hard to remove the garment of grace that the man Joseph was putting on. But the Lord said, I will be with you. Behold, the Lord was with Joseph. Behold, in the prison, the Lord was with him. He became the prime minister of Israel. He refused that the different locations he found himself will bring him down. The next very important scripture as we look at our location. The Bible said in Psalm 23 verse 4, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Oh, there is a valley of death that man can walk through. There is times of difficulty. There are times of hardship. There are times of challenges. There are times even your own siblings will want to be super serious against you. And the Lord said, I will be with you. And when the Lord is with a man, that same God will help that man. Whoever the Lord has placed his hand of righteousness upon, such man the Lord will bless. Colossians chapter 2 says, Now that you have received Christ the Lord, live in him, dwell in him. When we dwell in the Lord, we cannot be taken away. No power, no authority, no power, no authority has the right to bring us out from the graces that God has supplied us. Point number four. Jephthah did not allow the actions of these brothers to discharge him. He didn't allow the mindset. He didn't allow the thoughts of his brothers to dissuade him. He didn't allow the mentality of brothers to dissuade him. The Bible called Jephthah a mighty warrior. A mighty warrior. A man of great capabilities. A man of great thoughts. A man that is filled with the power of God. A man who believed that God is with him. Point number five. Jephthah did not go after goodness and mercy. Praise God. Jephthah refused to pursue goodness and mercy. Rather, goodness and mercy followed him. That is the scripture. The Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow us. Not 10,000 days, not 10,000 years, but all the days of our lives, all the rest of our lives, all the times wherein we have lived. I want to conclude by looking at the demarcation, at the differences between the man, Gideon, and the man, Jephthah. We look at the scriptures, Judges chapter 8. Judges chapter 8. Now, the Ephraimite asked Gideon, why have you treated us this way? Why didn't you call us when you fight against the Midian? And they criticized him sharply. But he answered, what have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't the gleaning of Ephraim grapes better than the full grapes harvest of Abiazah? God gave Oreb and Zip. Number one, Jephthah had the time to explain issues to, rather Gideon had the time to explain this matter in chapter 8 to the people, men of Ephraim. Jephthah hadn't such times. Gideon had the time to make an explanation. Jephthah is not interested. Jephthah was a man that is filled. Gideon was a man, rather, that was filled with fear. Gideon, the Lord met with him in the judge book of Judges chapter 6. The Lord called Gideon. When the Midianites were fighting against the Israelites, the Lord met Gideon where he was hiding. Where he was hiding himself. 
Though the Lord was calling him a mighty man of valor, yet Gideon feared he is not. Jephthah was a man of grace. Let us not seek status like the man, men of Ephraim. Rather, let us put our countenances in the Lord and allow him to give us instructions that we follow through the message of Jesus Christ. We pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to be as valiant as Jephthah, redeeming the time, standing on the promises you have given us, so as to defeat the vials of the enemy. Give us grace to succeed through this day, the 18th day of April, 2023, and reap every blessing today will bring. Thank you, Holy God, through the merits of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on The Daily Dynamite.